Hello and welcome back to another video for Final Fantasy XIV. Today we're looking at another Final Fantasy XIV official blog. This one is quite interesting because it shows more details about the outfit related to the Final Fantasy XVI event and the various rewards that we can get. Of course, that event is coming up very soon. It has its own trailer. So on the 2nd of April, which is coming Tuesday at 8 a.m. GMT, which is 1900 AEDT and lasting all the way until the 8th of May, you'll be able to get some really cool rewards. A lot of these rewards will be presumably through the Gold Saucer and uh, a lot of people are hyped for this one. It seems to be quite rewarding. So for the participation on this, you need to go to Uldar Steps of Nulled and talk to the Neophyte Adventurer, which is this chap here. And as you can see, the main reward then from the quest line is the Metean Attire. So let's zoom in and look at this then in, its, uh, in all its glory. So these are pretty high resolution images, which is really nice. I'll link the blog in the description so you can go look at this yourself. There are very little differences now that we can actually see them in a frame in the actual game in higher resolution. So obviously the only differences there is obviously there's a bit of extra allowance for the female form in places, but for the most part it's one to one, which is really good, really good. We don't like gender locks. And we don't really like gender uh, differences between gear. I think that um, it kind of annoys me when they lock things behind gender. So this is really good. And of course, it is modeled after the Final Fantasy 16 character, Clive Rosefield. These slightly lower resolution images, though, do actually paint a bigger picture. We didn't see this before. So I've covered, obviously, this is pre-Dawn Trail. So we only have one dye palette, right? So bear that in mind and take everything that you see with a pinch of salt. So, of course, we've got this in what appears to be jet black, I think that is, or probably gunmetal black. I'm not sure uh, for all of the pieces there that are dyeable. And of course, we've got, um, I believe that's either turquoise or yeah, it's, it's turquoise blue, isn't it? And then this looks like pearl white. I don't know if that's supposed to be pure white, but it looks more pearl white. Again, very difficult to tell in these pictures. But you can see that the main dyeable section is the chest piece and the fabric, the bit that would normally be, well, as you can already see, the bit that would be red is the bit that changes color. So I can imagine some people will be immediately disappointed, but honestly, black, this dark black is not actually that bad of a thing to match with. If it was bright red or something like that, then it'd be a lot diff uh, more difficult to match with. And the fact that this main part of fabric is the bit that dies doesn't annoy me as much as a lot of the other outfits we've had in the game. So this is actually not a bad idea um, and a good representation. I think the delivery has been on point here. Uh, of course, in Dawn Trail, we don't know what things are being backdated, what items will allow for the dual dye channel palette, where you'll be able to dye two sections of each piece of armor in the future. I would like to think that something like event armor would be included in that, if not immediately at some point. So uh, it'd be nice to be able to dye all of this other color. And obviously the, the main thing here is there's two major colors. There's the red section that's already dyeable, and then you've got the black itself. Obviously not perfect, but it'd be cool to uh, to have that unlock. Uh, so hopefully they do backdate this. So those are pretty cool. The other reward then that we get a really nice high resolution picture of is the Torgol minion, which is the Torgol pup. Um, again, this is likely from something like Gold Saucer. I doubt this will be given to you as part of the actual um, event quest, but I've, I've no idea. Like I say, uh, there has to be some things that you work for though in this, right, to make it worthwhile, uh, you know, to fill the time for a lot of people. This is adorable though. If you've played Final Fantasy 16, then Torgol is adorable. Obviously showing different phases of the pup's growth throughout the entire game from a little puppy all the way up to his faithful companion of the Torgol Mount, which as you can see in this image is absolutely glorious. This high resolution model, perfect. It looks as though not quite as if it was ripped from Final Fantasy 16, uh, although I would imagine that the model probably is based on one of the other dog mounts we have and probably a reskin from Final Fantasy 14, but they've done a really good job. Look at the fur on this. I can't wait to see this in motion in the game. Of course, it's going to look slightly different, but uh, every little detail here is it's just nice, isn't it? Really, really nice. Good attention to detail. And then the other thing that we have is uh, information on an emote that comes with said mount. So we said before, how cool would it be if you could pet Torgol? Well, it appears that we can actually pet, pet the doggo. 
you can indeed pet the Torgal. And uh, if we didn't have that, then it would be a, a crying shame considering we can do that with a Corgi. So I would imagine it's probably a similar emote interaction uh, whilst you're on the mount to the same one. So this is an action bar that switches, um, obviously, when you ride on the mount, which is really cool. Really, really, really cool. But what's the button for? The event quest has many scenes that 16 players will recognize from their time in Valisthea. If you haven't played 16 yet, don't worry, you'll be able to enjoy the quest whether or not you finish the game. So accessibility. And of course, we have Torgal as a pup there, hanging out on some dock side, which is interesting. The goodest boy, he's waiting for you. That's it for today's preview. So I think honestly, they've done more than enough with this preview. They've given us a good idea of what to expect. Um, again, the reward's not listed of where they're from, but uh, it's a good bet that it'll be the Gold Saucer because of how the Final Fantasy 15 event worked out. But I'd love to know what bits come from what and what we get for the main quest, but I can guarantee at the very least that the, the costume will definitely be from this. It definitely looks like one not to miss, and I personally can't wait for the 2nd of April. And honestly, the dye palette system, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how it changes in the future for a lot of event gear and items but let me know what you think about this would you have preferred the other section to be diable or would you prefer if all of it was diable in one go personally i think this is the right approach because i would prefer to have this as the second palette in the future for the black sections i think the boots are probably the most disappointing bit that dies honestly this tiny bit of turquoise on the bottom and white there but um yeah i mean this is all in preparation for future changes. And again, all these textures will likely be completely different in the future as well. Anyway, let me know what you think. Have a good one, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.